Right now it is time for This Week in the Lakeville Journal. We're joined by Cynthia, who's at the offices of Lakeville Journal, lonely by herself. Good morning, Cynthia. Me and the drivers. Uh, It's you and the drivers. Ooh, that sounds like a movie. Cynthia and and the drivers. drivers. Appearing on Netflix, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, of course, Janet is at home base. Good morning, Janet. Good morning. All right. Uh, well, we can go to the Lakeville Journal and uh, the main story on the front. Uh, uh, COVID-19 may be nearing its peak in Litchfield County, but uh, as a fluid situation it is, also the uh, COVID-19 facility might not be used well. Uh, it appears now that the Sharon Healthcare Center will be used as a, as a center. And, you know, Janet and, and Cynthia, I don't know if you were watching the, the news con- uh, when, when Governor Lamont was doing his thing yesterday. And it was just a normal thing. I was sitting at my computer typing stories and stuff, and all of a sudden I hear uh, the person from Health and Human Services say, and Sharon Hospital and so-and-so yeah. are going to be designated. Co- Sharon well, Healthcare Center. Yeah, they kind of buried it. Um, <laughs> Governor Lamont sent out an announcement around that, uh, 8 o'clock last night. And... Um, so we have a story this week on the front page saying Sharon was – so last week there was a lot of conversation yeah. about would they be segregating COVID-19 positive nursing home residents into specific COVID-19 facilities. And one of the facilities they were talking about was Sharon Healthcare Center, which is not related to Sharon Hospital no. and is part of the Athena healthcare system. And as of press time, it was decided that Sharon Healthcare would, would not be – um, and, but as Maria Horn says, right at the top of the article, we have very fluid situation, not permanent. And so as of last night, the decision was made that, in fact, Athena is going to work with the state and be the first of the um, nursing home companies to offer up its facilities for overflow. And as the governor said in his press release, there are 2,000 available beds right now at nursing homes that are really sorely needed. And so they'll be moving people. There's a lot of you know, complicated questions. I think that if my mom was being moved without her consent from one place to another, I, I you know, but on the other they, hand, this they, is a big, they well, have, you know, it's a, it's a, this is an unusual time. And they haven't said, the, okay state, the state hasn't said yet that they're going to move people without their consent. But uh, if they're going to move people into Sharon Healthcare Center uh, and, and, and folks, uh, I, I want, I, I've, I've been stressing this. You've got to have some compassion here. Thirty, the the, the nursing homes now are almost forty percent full. Now this is statewide, and it's growing by numbers every day. So they they have to find a solution to the problem. The problem that I saw was that once again it was just a throw in at the end, and and I called Maria Horn and Brent Colley, and they were not informed of it in advance. Uh, and yeah, I was surprised we didn't get a notice from Brent because we got a, a notice pretty quickly from Maria Horn after the governor's announcement. And but um, Brent, who's usually right on top of it, I think partly because people start calling him at home and saying, "What is going on?" Um, we didn't, we haven't heard back from him, but we will speak to him this week. Yeah, and you know, Cynthia did do an update story yeah. on this, and it's up on our website at TriconorNews dot com right now with all the information that we have at this time. Even when we printed this story. In the headline, we said, for now, yeah. Sharon will it's, not be, because it was not clear. Cynthia was directly in touch yeah. with Athena Health, with their communications person, and he did not confirm that it would not be. He said, we are still in negotiations, and I, I'm not sure what the state is going to decide. So um, it, it's a fluid situation, and yet um, it's a little different from saying it will be for COVID-19 uh, positive patients because, it, as I'm understanding it, it's for recovery for, for patients who have gone through the hospitals and um, aren't ready to go home but still need care. Yeah, well, the problem is is that nursing homes won't take them back until they until they spend a certain period of time and, and, and show that they don't have any of the symptoms. So the nursing homes they left to go to the hospitals are not allowing them back in. That right. is what is causing the problem. And, and you know what? It's it's an understandable problem that would be caused. I Absolutely. mean, and we've had pretty good record up here where we have not a single case reported yet at Noble Horizons, not a single case reported yet at Gear. And so what the governor has said is, instead of segregating these COVID nineteen positive patients, what they're doing is if somebody's in acute hospital care, once they've tested negative twice in twenty four hours, then they're allowed to be moved to this intermediary facility where they can be cared for for the. For you know, the 
and continuing I, days. And I spoke to Mark Herco again this week, and Sharon Hospital does have COVID-19 patients. They have COVID on the second. They do have they have COVID-19 patients. They don't have patients on ventilators. What they have are, if, if a patient has to go on a ventilator, uh, they are then sent to one of the bigger hospitals in Danbury or Vassar Brothers. Right. Uh, they, they they have recovering patients right now. And if the recovering patients get worse, then they go to larger hospitals. So that's the way Sharon Hospital has, is, is included in this right now. And I think both you and we have heard this rumor, which seems pretty well founded, but it's not confirmed that the surgical unit at the hospital is going to be converted to overflow for Norwalk Hospital patients. Yeah, it's... We're it, still checking, we're still tracing that. Oh, no, yeah, it's... Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and not only Sharon Hospital, but uh, Fairfield County is literally overwhelmed. And and uh, Sharon Hospital and other hospitals in the northwest corner are going to have to help fill the bill. The bill right. so. For yeah, those I, who are I, not I, as familiar with Connecticut, of course, Fairfield County is where many New York City yeah. residents have their... Yeah. Homes. And so the thinking is a lot of it was brought up from New York. It's an overflow area. And so far in our area, we're still fairly under control. We have all over the Lakeville Journal and our website links to the okay. state site. I would say Governor Lamont is doing a phenomenal job of updating it every day. Um, the new numbers are posted every day around 4 o'clock. But the number of deaths in the state, in our, in our county, has increased exponentially yeah. since last week, where I think, we were, I think we were at 12 last night. Um, but we've been speaking to Rob Rubo from Torrington Area Health District, which is our area um, health authority, and we do have that story here. Um, he's seeing, they're predicting that Connecticut will peak in two weeks, and then, which is, will make it a very difficult two weeks, but, for, you know, ha- happily, hopefully, once it peaks, it will begin to, the numbers will begin to come down. But, you know, as they said in Hong Kong, part of the problem was as soon as people were able to stop being in quarantine, they very quickly went back out, and there was um, a lot of foreign travel coming in, and the numbers spiked again. So I think that we all need to continue to be pretty vigilant. All right. I want to move over to another story, and that is uh, the death of Ann Bass. Quite a big deal, and yeah. not related to COVID-19. No. And, you know, one of the first questions I asked was, were, was the family able to come in and visit her in the hospital, which, um, you know, so many of the hospitals are not really open to visit right now, but so they were, which is nice. So Anne, very important person in Ken Village, but very unknown, very quiet, um, super philanthropic, super philanthropic, beneficial uh, force for good in the, in the village of Kent and many other places where she had homes. And we have a beautiful series of interviews, not only with Jean Speck, who is a very articulate and said wonderful things, and that's in the print edition, but because so much is happening right now, yeah. we're jumping a lot of stories from print to our website, which is tricornernews.com, and we hope that you're all able to access that. Um, But the full story of Ann Bass with interviews with Hiram Williams, who is her partner in the restoration and reconfiguration of Kent Village, and um, her partner, Jillian Lethbridge, the painter, who is just so bereft and really said the most wonderful things about her. When, when you say you're online, our uh, our Facebook page is now uh, certain posts are getting ten to 15,000 uh, views a, a shot. I mean, yeah. it's... Yeah, we uh, have people, a lot of activity. Yeah, people are just uh, are hungry for... I think, and I think that when they get their information locally, I think I know this sounds strange. They, I think they feel a little bit better about it, not as removed from it. Uh, and I, I think that's a, a service that we all provide. Uh, right. Along and what with, we're trying to do is is add a sense of normalcy to. Yeah. We're trying to do stories just about what regular life is still like here, because, you know, as, as Dan and I know from we, we've their essential trips we've had to make. When you go out, life is to a large degree still happening. You know, builders are still out there. People are still working at restaurants. There's a lot of life out there. It's not quite as dire once you're out and the weather is so beautiful. All right. So now uh, next story that I want to touch on is uh, uh, online uh, Easter services. Right. And so, of course, last night was the um, at, at sunset Passover began and a lot of families had uh, Zoom or FaceTime seders, which Saders. we talk about in Compass. Right. <laughs> but Leela Hawkin interviewed the Reverend um, Douglas Grand George from the beautiful Smithfield Church in Amenia, which is really historic, very beautiful old church. And even they are going on the Internet with their service. And we have, as um, I think most people know, uh, online services at almost all the area churches. And we're seeing a really strong sense of uh, religious community resurgence, which we have a reporter working on a story in the next week or so about, you know, a lot of people really stepping up. We have beautiful letters on the letters page this week from people sort of saying, this is a time to pull together as a community. Prayer is great. Let's all support each other. And a real estate market, a slow motion at 
Yeah, people keep, the real estate agents are really super active right now, and they keep checking in and sort of saying, I've got something to talk to you about. So we had a great story with Ira Goldspiel, I think, two weeks ago, about how people are calling him from New York and saying, I'll just take it, whatever you've got, I'll take it. Um, we have John Harney and Graham Clemen this week talking about remembering uh, September 11th, 2001, quite a long time ago, and how people were doing the same thing, just sort of saying, we need to get out of here. And Graham saying, you know, a lot of those rentals did translate into sales. And, of course, those people who bought then are not buying now because they already have a house, but there's a new generation of people who are saying, I think it's time to start looking for a place that we can get away to up in the country. And so they're trying to sort of figure out how many of these rentals are going to convert to sales. And I'm speaking to Elise Herney Morris today at noon. We're going to be doing another story with her next week about how Litchfield County, for the most part, has really stepped up and been very welcoming to people who are new in town and how, for the most part, these newcomers are being, as far as I can tell when I'm out, seem to be pretty... um, trying very hard to fit into the community and be polite and supportive, which I would say is not true in all the towns I've been to in other areas surrounding us. All right. And once again, uh, the bottom right-hand corner, uh, Janet, you talk about the changes in the, the delivery mode for the journal. Right. This is the week where we're cutting back the single copy sales our drivers are taking around. And, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. It's We're having a single outlet open in each of our core towns and in you know, in, in that we include um, not just the towns of Region 1, but, uh, you know, obviously on the New York State side, um, Millerton, Pine Plains, Amenia, and Copac, and we will um, be in Torrington, Goshen, and we have it listed here. So do uh, uh, Cornwall Country Market. Uh, we, we have the list of where the papers are. Um, we'll see how it goes week by week. What I'll do uh, is I will also uh, put that up on our Facebook page, that list for people, uh, and also the, along with the link to tricornernews.com so uh, people can, can can understand where and how and when they can they can pick up the paper and, and, and either online or uh, in your old hand version copies. Right. All of the subscriptions are going yeah. out as normal. And, um, yeah, we encourage people to look at the website if that works for them. During this time period, we're trying to keep um, uh, our drivers' uh, stops to a minimum and uh, to keep everyone safe during this period. All right. Uh, you've got uh, the uh, – it's funny when I posted this story last week, somebody said, oh, no, the deadline's passed. But uh, there is a, a longer deadline uh, for insurance, health insurance in Connecticut. It's been extended to uh, April the 17th. And for people who have – have tried and been frustrated by the process. Janet Carlson, who is one of Earth's angels, is very, very competent at helping people navigate that system, and they should definitely call her. Her contact information is is in the paper there. Also, on the front page, we had that um, nice column from Tim oh, Tim Abbott talking right. about uh, the ex- expectation of a comment. And of course, you know, historically, we've always thought of comments as coinciding with historic events. And um, of course, this particular COVID right now, we've got Passover, we've got Easter, and the possibility of a comment coming. But as we uh, are seeing through Nature's Notebook, life does continue to some degree. So in A2, we also have, we're trying to do stories for, for some of the many people who are up here who are not normally up here. And I would say the question I get most frequently from my friends who are weekenders is, I really need to find a doctor up here. And so more than ever, of course, people really want to know how to find a doctor. So we've got um, information not just on where you can go, which websites, which hospital systems to look at, but I tried to go through and actually do it as though I were looking for a doctor. And we've got the names of towns that are nearby, in case you're not familiar with the nearby towns. And we have some of the doctors that are on there who are sort of very well-known local doctors who are um, with those health systems, Hartford and uh, New Vance slash HealthQuest. Now, it's interesting on uh, page A3, you've got stories, advice from COVID-19 survivor, mental health worries, uh, how to make your own mask. Uh, I was affected this week uh, when I found out uh, actually at the end of last week that my sister, who was uh, fighting MS in a, in a long-term care facility uh, yeah. that had COVID-19 come into it, and within days, her health declined, uh, and she was transferred to a hospital, and they have not even bothered tested her. She is in hospice now. So, oh, co- so uh, COVID-19 uh, strikes in so many different ways and affects so many different families uh, that also, with, like you were saying, with funerals where families can't gather for funerals uh, and right. services. It's just a, an amazing swath. Uh, and you know what? I think everybody's handling it pretty good. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. 
We're all together. Um, so my friend Tori Jado is um, the, so far the only reported case in Cornwall and has been very open about um, describing for people what the progression of COVID-19 in her body was as she was experiencing experiencing it in real time on Instagram and I assume Facebook also. Um, so, my, so Deborah Alexinas, are such a, a wonderful reporter, um, had interviewed Tori in January about the addiction film that Tori has been working on for several years, which is really meant to um, talk about addiction and its roots in childhood trauma. Tori's just a wonderful person and um, got COVID-19 and is much better already, which we're very happy. And also, um, I'm speaking to Tim Brown from Athena Healthcare Systems, which owns Sharon Healthcare, and I said, by the way, how is that patient at Sharon Healthcare who was the first Northwest Corner person to have tested positive? And he said, oh, that's a wonderful story. So I'm hoping to talk to Sir Thornton today, who is the director of Sharon Healthcare, and find out um, what the wonderful story is, but presumably it means she's better. So we're happy about that. All right, uh, Salisbury VNA, home visits, vital and safe. Right. And so, of course, very important for so many people who um, did not magically get cured of the many things that they're suffering for, um, still do need these home visits, um, need meals, need help getting cleaned up, just need help with their med checks. So don't be shy to call Salisbury Visiting Nurse. Um, they're all masked up and gloved up. And, uh, and, and also their home assistance side also is, is, is open for business uh, under safe rules to help you out during this time as well. Um, uh, the Region 1 school staff, uh, they, they agreed to pay them, and, uh, and that's a good thing. And, of course, the governor um, did make that, that that was an executive order that yeah. bus companies and school staff must continue to be paid. And one of the things when you're out um, is you do see these school buses dropping off food, and I'm thinking, boy, that's like the hardest aerobics class ever. These bus drivers are, like, getting off and on the bus. But um, people are leaving coolers out. You can see coolers all over the northwest corner. And um, I believe the White Heart is helping um, in participating in creating school meals for kids. There's a lot of kids in the area who do need the financial support of having a meal delivered to their home. So we're really sort of uh, impressed and pleased that Region 1 is able to make that possible. And thanks uh, to the White Heart. I want to move on to the story about uh, Matthews 1812 House closing its doors. Yeah, we were sorry to see that they had posted, um, they were auctioning off all of their restaurant equipment, and um, Noel Ambery had called them up, and it really is like that movie Baby Boom with Diane Keaton and um, Sam Shepard from the 80s that was so great about a woman who moves up to the country and starts this great business in her kitchen. So I believe it's uh, three generations, two generations of um, the Matthews family and Cynthia uh, Matthews von Berg finally felt it was time. It was not really COVID-related, but um, certainly that's not helping. So a uh, sorry loss. I know a lot of people would go work for them for the holidays and help package up their wonderful baked goods and send them off. And in Kent, uh, areas of regulation, recreation have been closed to the public. Additional ones, that's, I should say. That's right. And, um, you know, they're in Falls Village also, they haven't closed that area off, but people from the city do come up for these waterfalls. And even when there's not COVID-19, people are very cavalier about how dangerous those falls are. They're super dangerous, and people should not go swimming in there, even when it's a lovely day. Or even standing at the edge of the, um, the rocks, those the river is really moving right now, and people should be very respectful of the of the fatal dangers of um, of that water. But there were also the additional problems of um, social distancing. The Appalachian Trail had already been closed down. Many of the state parks had been closed down, and uh, Gene Speck has now said the um, the the recreation areas down at Bulls Bridge are closed, and the state just closed Kent Falls State Park. All right, I want to move on to the story about Shea Cohen uh, and the incredible memorial that was done. Uh, over 320 vehicles. Uh, we videoed it. Uh, 15,000 views. 15,000 yeah. views. The, uh, the, the show out of love uh, for the Cohen family uh, that came out of that was truly, absolutely amazing. Yes, and so Shea Cohen, who had died in a fatal car crash, well, he, the car crash is not fatal. Um, Shea Cohen in a car with his friend, both 16 years old and um, the older sister of his friend and another friend, both in their 20s, 20 years old, and um, were in a crash with a pickup truck in North Canaan on uh, a week ago Friday, and Shea died from his injuries on Sunday. And a, a big loss, very beloved kid, um, parents very well known, sisters very well known. And I have to say, I was dealing with his sister on the phone and handling the obituary and the courage that she showed and the maturity, unbelievable. So the family actually sat out on Main Street during what must have been a brutally emotional uh, half hour or so. But I think how could you not appreciate that outpouring of love?
Uh, yeah, it was um, we also a, have um, the obituary for Helen Testa, who for many, many years was our circulation director. Janet, do you want to talk about her at all? Yeah, she was with us for almost 50 years. It's incredible. She worked for us until she was 87. She was 89 now when she died, and um, just an amazing woman. We were so lucky to have her as part of our uh, group at the Lakeville Journal. She saw it all and saw it. The business changed so dramatically over the course of time, but was always flexible. As her family said in her obituary, when she retired two years ago, she said she was just going to take a break. And uh, (laughs) she got a couple of years. So, you know, amazing woman. All right. Uh, Your editorial, Keeping It Together in Spite of It All. Right, which is what we are all doing. Um, to the best of our abilities, you know, there there are so many issues that are coming up as this time of uh, pandemic goes on that you couldn't have foreseen, you know, especially inside our homes. Um, we, we talk about the fact that we're looking for leadership to our governors rather than, of course, to our president. But uh, this there are many who we salute for being courageous during this time. But most of but this week we salute the parents who are taking care of young children inside the homes and have turned into teachers and are uh, working their kids through the school year going forward and uh, figuring out how to keep their kids on an even keel uh, through a very scary time. So we're, we're thinking of these parents and we talk about that and we look for them to let us know how they're doing. All right, and a couple of letters and uh, a a column. But I I want to go back to turning back the pages to show how 100 years medicine has changed. A hundred years ago, uh, Master James Meehan Orhill returned home Saturday after a stay of eight weeks at the Sharon Hospital on account of a broken leg. A broken leg. Isn't that incredible? I saw that and said, well, he just stayed there until he could walk out That's normally. Okay. It healed, you know? Amazing. It, so. it's, when you look at stories like that, a time really does fly. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, that it is. It's fascinating to look back at these old issues. So by all means, if anyone has time on their hands right now uh, in quarantine and they're feeling up to it, go take a look at the Scoville Library website and uh, take a look back at these archives. It's fascinating. And the back two pages have uh, Sharon in North Canaan and also Compass. And we have about two minutes left here, Cynthia. All right, so very quickly, um, Brent Colley has been um, posting a history stuff on um, an Instagram site that's been very interesting. And just uh, coincidentally, a couple who are here from Italy and aren't able to get back um, had got married outside Town Hall. And so there's very cute uh, photos of that and a nice story from Bartley Johnson about how um, they came to her shop in the Sharon Plaza, found a dress by the by the bride's favorite designer, and got married. We have the Tesla charging station coming up in North Canaan. That's what that construction has been at the edge of the Stop and Shop parking lot. We're one of the only Tesla charging stations in the state, and there's a lot of um, units there, which is interesting because they're only for Tesla cars. You can get a conversion unit for another electric car, but you have to buy it. Um, for Compass, I think of all of us being home alone all the time or home with family all the time as being very Jane Austen. So I called Susan Consolving, who is poet in residence at the Hotchkiss School and has just recently published a book of her poetry. And her husband, William, who's a writer, playwright, actor, and just general wonderful human being, and said, what would you read as a family at a time like this. So there are their suggestions in the print edition, and, of course, the full poems are online at our website. We have uh, Jenny Hansel talking about a Zoom Seder, which I know many people did last night, and I believe tonight is the second Seder. So do read about that, although I'm sure that um, many people have already experienced it. And then a lot of online arts events. Hotchka School is now putting concerts on from its season at Alfers Hall starting on Saturdays. Um, at, the, at press time, we didn't know what the full schedule was, but you can go online and find that. And that's what we've got. All right. Uh, that Lakeville Journal, once again, uh, home, if you get a, a subscription, it shows up at your home. If you uh, want to pick up a copy, there's available in each town. And, of course, tricornernews.com, tricornernews.com. We will speak to you guys next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. That is uh, this week in the Lakeville Journal here on Robin Hood Radio. Uh, Once again, tricornernews.com where you can find them.